some truth on it. You know what um, Sharafuddin II said about our uh, Gala and Gullah video. He said that the Gala in Afan Ormo, in Afan Ormo, it, it means camels or refers to camels. Then he made a little comment about how people who don't know shouldn't talk about this or that. All we referenced, and we mentioned this in our response, was the information that's out there from a variety of sources, a variety of sources, not just European sources, not just so-called Ethiopian or Highland Judeo-Christian sources, but also some Arabic sources, some so-called pseudo-Islamic sources. So from a variety of sources, that video that we did on the Gala and the Gullah was presented and put forward. But interestingly enough, and this is one of the areas that we even encourage dialogue, even amongst us as so-called African Americans and Rastafari and those of us in the diaspora, black people, Africans in the Americas and the Caribbean, with the different nations of the Ethiopic, the ancient Ethiopic empire. Because we have to remember, they like to say that it's tribes, right? They like to call the people, you know, this is overstanding uh, tribalism. And this is because of what the, you know, the Europeans coming in, of course, and we live in a, a Eurocentric world, a Eurocentric, um, a, 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 a white European formed world. In other words, our worldview, even the language we're speaking, that should show us a lot. And the kind of phrases and other reference points goes back to what we call the Gentiles or the, the white supremacist domination, what the Bible calls the, um, the Gentile world domination coming out of the Grecos and the Romans. We can also call it today the Europeans or the Anglo, Anglo-American, speaking about the British, and the daughter of Britain, of Great Britannia, which is America, the USA, all right? But they use these slangs of tribal, tribalism. But really, when we look at Ethiopia, we see that there are what's called nations. And this is important that we make this distinction between is it tribe or is it really nations, you understand? And upon meditation and study and examination, some dialogue and reasoning, we've come to this conclusion that what we call so-called tribes are really nations. Because if we look at Ethiopia from its own perspective, Ethiopia is an empire. Not just what's going on today is, is, is a postmodern kind of experiment. What the Ethiopians are doing today is like an experiment, in a sense. And it hasn't really gone very well, but... You know, if our father can give them an opportunity to experiment, trial and error and so forth and so on, we can also, you know, recognize that's what they're about, a trial and error. But when they recover their senses, they'll recognize that it's really different Ethiopian nations, that this idea of tribe is very dubious, is very dubious, especially in the Eurocentric sense, that it's really different nations. So then when we deal with the people known as the, um, the Gala, or as they like to call themselves today, the Oromo, and we say, well, what is the meaning of this, of this G word, this G term, Gala? Now, Sharafu Dean, the second, a regular contributor, you can say, as far as comments and commentaries, not many that we agree with, but occasionally, you know, um, the individual says something that contributes to the discussion. And all we really ask and request is a dialogue. You understand that you hear our side of the story, we'll listen to your side of the story, but if you want to come, you know, as though, um, if you want to come with a more kind of aggressive, you know, if you think we're going to be victims of terrorism, you got the wrong idea in mind. You know what I mean? you got to understand who this people, who we as as a once lost but now found people are. And, and the fact that a lot of examples that even Africans are getting in different ways, they're getting from the experience of our people over here, black people, African Americans, Africans in the Caribbean, over here in the West. That's one of the reasons why a majority of them are in the West, in America, and in England and Europe, but particularly in America, and probably to a lesser extent, in um, Great Britannia. But anyway, he said that Oromo, or really Gala, in, 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 in what is known as the Afan Oromo, he said that this right here, right, let's 
let's back up and get a little more room. He said this means camels. This refers to camel, right? This refers to camel. Now, here's what's very interesting about this. Okay, we said uh, if this is your language and or this is your dialect of the language, remember he said Afan Orma, which makes us ask, beg the question, are there other kinds of Orma? You understand? And, and this is what we ask for a dialogue of from those who know. We also ask for certain dictionaries or other references that we can really um, confirm whether Gala really does mean Oromo. But if it does, uh, uh, excuse me, if Gala actually means camel. But if it does mean camel, this is very interesting because the first thing that we, we basically ask ourselves is that um, if Gala in the Afan Oromo language, right, means camels, Right or refers to camel, and then later on the people by other people were called Gala, and to a certain extent they didn't like it, but they accepted like we accepted nigger, the N word, so forth and so on, and still running away from the N word, and it seems like many of the Ottomans are running away from the Gala word, and still really, honestly, truthfully breaking down the possible you understand, origins for this terminology. They say that, well, it's basically some Amharas and Ethiopians that call them Gala, but it's also other people that refer to them as Gala as well, besides the Ethiopians. And that's what our other video was about when we touched on that right there. But here's the question we asked about camels, because we're going to go into this a little bit more. But we asked this question about camels or camel. We know in, in the Ethiopic, right, we say, we say, let's Let's write this here. We say, in the Ethiopic, we have gala. We have ga, right? And we have la. You understand? And there's a garun. You know, this is all, that's all um, linguistic talk. But it's, it's one L, but it has the sound with the redoubling, the redoubling in the language to be gala, and therefore to sound like this, right? Gala. Now, they said that this means camel. In the Ethiopic, we have g m l right, or gemel, gemel, right? Gemel actually means camel. Now, we said, well, how many camels do you see in the highlands of Ethiopia? In other words, in the territory that is claimed by the Judeo-Christian um, inheritors, of that um, Davidic and, and Solomonic dynasty, how many camels do you see in inner Ethiopia and in the highlands of Ethiopia? You don't really see too many camels. I mean, they know what the word is. They call it gemel, but you don't see so many camels. Now, if the Ethiopians, the highland Christian Tigray Amhara, the Solomonic Davidic orientated Ethiopians called the Ormos Gala. And if the Afan Ormos say that this word Gala actually refers to camel in their dialect, and there are not camels indigenous to the highlands of Ethiopia, but more to Arab and desert regions it brings some other questions to mind. And this is why we thank uh, Sharafu, Sharafu Dean um, for his comment, you understand, concerning that, although he tried to throw in a little slight, but he did not present any information or any evidence to prove that what we said was wrong. All he proved basically is that, well, he and others like him don't like it. You know, and don't like that truth, but they didn't ever prove that, well, the, the gal, 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 gul, la, gal, la, gul, la. He never proved that, that that linguistic etymological reference point was really wrong. All he said, basically, is that in this particular dialect of the Oromo or Romifa or Oromonia, you know, but they don't say that, they say Oromifa, more or less, but in the Afan dialect, that gala means camel, but camels, right, are not indigenous to the particular region of Ethiopia that we know as, as the highlands or that we know as being the territory of the Judeo-Christian Ethiopians. 
You see, so this is very interesting because they also claim that this land was taken by the Judeo-Christian um, or Shemitic Ethiopians from them. This is, this is the claim of certain Oromos and, and formerly known as Gala, is that they, they were invaded by these Judeo-Christian Ethiopians claiming to be of this Solomonic, Davidic line, Ark of the Covenant. They, they claim, some of them, the radicals, namely, um, claim that, well, that's all lies. You understand, like that megalomatis, that, that Greco-Turkish so-called Egyptian dude that has some articles on the Internet. I mean, he's just a rabid hater, but he's a, he's a Hittite. He's a Hittite. And remember, the Hittites are the Turkish, and the Turkish are the ones for the Ottoman Turkish Empire. And it was the Turks that actually established this Habishistan or Habashistan in the Horn of Africa in the very same regions that are conflict zones this very day, where the people assume themselves to be more Arab, Arab than to be African or Ethiopian. That's a thorn right now in Ethiopia's side. But based on what, what Sharafuddin presented, once again, we, we thank him on this, on this alternative etymology of Gala because it basically proves our point even more because if Gala does mean camels, that means that the people who were the Oromo people who were identified or, if you, want, if you will, misidentified as Galas, that they were ascribed this most likely because of the camels that they use in their migrating to and fro and most likely they're migrating into those regions. Thus, Bahari, who wrote a particular history of the Galas, which many um, Oromo say was patently wrong. They say it, it was untrue, it was lies, it was errors. Um, but it, if, if, if Gala means camels, right, and um, those people who ascribe to some sort of Oromo, Oromo background, because there's more than just the Afan Oromos, there's others, even some of the Somalians also ascribe themselves to be Oromos, you understand, or link with this so-called Gala people, you understand, as far as linguistically and otherwise, then we notice their, their region today, and this is Somalia. Somalia and certain regions such as Somalia and the Arab, there's an Arab relation is what we're trying to get to. And it's also proved that since the camel, which is called Gala, is not indigenous to what we know as Ethiopia, Therefore, the ancient Ethiopian testimony concerning the Oromos or the Galas, the Gala, is also correct. Perhaps they called the people Gala initially because they rode on camels. And which people rode on camels in that region? Well, we usually have the Arab people, we have merchants, we have traders, we have nomadic people. That, that these were basically some of the nomadic people. Therefore, the ancient Ethiopian testimony concerning the so-called Gala Wars, you understand, or the conflicts that the Judeo-Christian Ethiopians had with certain tribes or certain nations of the Oromos in establishing that foothold that we know as Holy Ethiopia, therefore is correct. So, if this is so, that Gala means camel according to the Afan Oromo, and if it's also true that the camel is not indigenous to the highlands of Ethiopia, that means that both the camel as well as the people who utilize the camel in their migratory migrations, just like we see what's going on in um, Somalia today, there's a drought. The people learn that there's food and resources elsewhere. And what they do, they just pick up and they go. They just pick up and they go. And we know that, that the camel is indigenous part of this nomadic pseudo-Arab, you know, perhaps they're part of the black Arab, perhaps they're part of the, um, the descendants of Abraham and Keturah, you know, saying we're not denying that they have some, some um, origins in the Ethiopia region. What we're trying to clarify is exactly who's who, and that cannot begin without some sort of dialogue. You understand? So we give thanks to Sharafuddin for his, um, for his comment and the piece of timely information that he gave. And we pray to the true God, 
that ones like this will, he will open their minds, open their eyes, so they can recognize that we're not seeking to be one's enemy, you understand, but we're seeking to dialogue so we can find out who's who, what's what, and we can look at it from our own perspective. We can come to some sort of a dialogue, and this is very important. This is the peace, in other words. It said the clear peace, you understand? And if they will not have peace, then we will have to, you know, follow the warlords, you understand? But we don't think that that's quite necessary at this present time, or nor should it be necessary in the future. So give thanks. This is to thank ones like Sharaf Udin, uh, you know, for his comment here in this particular context. Some of those other comments will return to sender. So give thanks and praise. Salam to Tenayistalin. Ene ras yadinos tefarit.